Hello and welcome to Let's Make Tracks. In this episode we're going to be uh, looking at the folding tabletop table that I started in the last episode. If you haven't seen that episode yet there'll be a card up there. If you want to quickly go watch that one then come back. I'll still be here. It's all cool. So let's run the intros and I'll show you what I've been getting up to. just run through some quick additions since uh, the last time we were here so I just uh, get the board out of storage mode unfold it and we'll take a closer look so as you can see I've already installed some track and we're going to be going over how I made this join a little bit later in the video it seems to behave so for the undercoat I use this Valspar primer and undercoat in white along with the PVA covered the whole board then we have a towel on blue this is for the sky this is the closest shade I could get without it being too cartoony and then we have a Liberty black gloss finish for the outside frames I think it's come out nicely I've added these additional bracing pieces on the side this is just to protect the uh, protruding screws bolts and uh, the hinges while the board's put away, safe from dragging along the floor. I already have the first two tracks in place, so what I'm going to do is uh, install the third one prematurely just to show you how I did it. So, first thing you need a piece of track. To ensure the rails line up after opening and closing, I'm going to be using these Pro Track rail aligners, and we'll go into more detail with these a bit later on. To ensure I get the correct distance, in between the tracks what I'm going to do is use uh, some spare points I have laying around and some sick radius curves to create a temporary well, I suppose it's a runaround loop this will help ensure that the uh, track centers are the correct distance apart and all the track pieces are in line also so with the last piece of cork that I have well, I pre-cut a load of them from the sheet I did have. Uh, they are the exact width, give or take, of uh, the track to minimise wastage. So I just slip that under there. And then I'm going to use these uh, alignment gauges. Um, I can't remember where I got them from. I'll put some sort of graphic on the screen somewhere on eBay. But when it comes to basically sealing down the core I want to make sure it's absolutely in the right place so all the set track pieces are in alignment distance is correct so time for glue so the old favorite PVA now before gluing your cork down you might want to think about separating the piece um, I've got just enough space in between the balls where I could slice just straight down the middle and then push both ends together to accommodate the gap I'm not actually going to do that with my one because I want to make absolutely sure that all the levels are correct so I'm going to cut it in situ. So the first thing, run a bead of glue down the centre of the cork, just give it a little rub around with my finger. You could do this with a brush but I enjoy doing this. So now I just flip this over and pop it back under the rails. So all that effort I did to make sure the tracks were in alignment was kind of undone. So I'll just pop these gauges back on here. Make sure it's in absolutely the right place. And after a quick bit of adjustment, just to make sure it's in exactly the right place I want it, it's time to move on to the next stage. Stop! Have a tap! Do, 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 do. I'm sorry. Now, this hammer I bought especially for this task, but as you can see, it's still too wide for the tracks. So I'm gonna show you a little technique that I've been using. But first, so 
sorry, not sorry. So with the pliers, I'm just push those pins just that last little way, and they go in quite nicely to work. So I'm going to do this one slowly for you. Ooh, there she goes. So now they're all properly lined up. I just have a little clean up there. So that'll do for now. I'll uh, probably come back to this tomorrow and uh, we'll move on. Okay, so I've got my piece of track and I'm going to be bridging the gap with these Pro Track rail aligners. So the idea is they go directly in the middle and they slot together and every time the tracks meet they should align perfectly. Now I just need to cut the ends off these alignments because I want to preserve as many sleeps as possible so I just nip off the little ends just so they fit in where I want them to. But before I do that I need to remove three sleepers from either side of the join so that uh, the aligners can slip in. So just cut along the uh, rail chairs just to release them and they should, once you've cut out enough from one rail, pop off. There we go. Of course you need to make sure you fully cut through the underside as well. Now what I should have done before cutting that off was actually mark where the, uh, the center is or where I'm going to be cutting. And this will help me uh, align up the aligners so that uh, the cut will go in the right place. So I'll just repeat the process for the three sleepers on the other side to accommodate the other aligner. So at this point I'll just give the aligners a test fit just to see how we're getting on. But as I say I do still need to take the ends off uh, just to preserve the last sleepers on either side because I want to save as many of them as possible. The pliers I have have this handy little nipper at the top which comes in handy. One last test fit, and that fits in there quite nicely. So, we're ready for soldering. Just for transparency, soldering is not my strongest ability. As you do, you tin both sides of what you want to bond, and then heat them both together to stick them together. When doing any work on the track section that still has sleepers attached, I use this trick. I get two tweezers and a pair of grips. And what this does is it stops the heat from the soldering iron from melting the sleepers. I'm going to use this old uh, cutting board in an attempt to protect my table. Because uh, bare metal on the table will leave some nasty marks as we're going to see in just a moment. Okay, so I'm just going to reassemble my anti-melt jig and then we're going to solder the aligners to the track. So as I've said, soldering is not my, uh, not my favourite job and it's also not where my talents lie. Another issue I came across was uh, the solder on one side or the other not heating up properly and creating a bump in the joint. So I used my pliers to push down on the rail and try my best to heat up the rail and the aligner evenly and hopefully this will uh, create a smooth bond. This is messy as all hell, but I get that off with a little bit of a flick. That is not coming anytime soon. And here is why it's always a good idea to do all your soldering on a heat proof surface. Lucky for me, this uh, cutting mat was uh, on the way out anyway. Another problem to add to the list where the uh, mat was a bit out of shape, it's caused the track to go out of shape as well so I just strain it out a bit so that, that doesn't rock anymore so very good now this is not the best soldering work in the world it's messy as hell I need to file it down but it's ready to install on the track 
time for the old switcheroo. So I just gently remove these pins. Hopefully the track isn't too stuck down. I'll be able to just pick it up. Yikes. Well, it's not a big deal. Everything's still intact. While I'm here, I'll just cut the cork. Obviously that'll remain perfectly in line. Might have to glue the edges back down. So what I'm gonna do with the new piece, I'll just pop the pins into the holes. So obviously they're all in the exact same places. So this should, in theory, just slot straight back in. So I'll just relocate the hole, it's just there. So that will just pop straight back in there. And I can just push that one back in with my finger. And I should be able to do the same for all four, but let's be honest, pushing pins hurts. So I'll just crack up my old friend. There we go. Snug as a boat. The alignment pieces come with additional pin holes. Uh, I'm putting a picture in the uh, top left corner over there to show which holes I'm taking advantage of. Obviously at the edge of the board this is important for everything not shifting. So, you know what time it is? Now this was uh, quite soul destroying for finding Sin Edit, but a little bit of tinkering here and there, and crisis averted. The time has come to separate the two boards. Now, it would be completely and utterly easier to do this with the track separate to the board, so I could get a straight cut. However, as I've already said, I wanted to make sure the rails are aligned perfectly. Um, obviously, there was a bit of an issue with this with the uh, previous issue, but as I say, this has all been corrected now. So now for the final stage to connect the power between board A and board B. So, drill your holes and attach your dropper wires to the track. Remembering that old covenant of the railway modeler black at the back and that way you won't get any uh, polarity issues pop the wires through your holes so as you can see I've put uh, all the holes on the same sides of the boards and the wires stay on their sides for now so when they poke through, you create these plug pieces with uh, terminal blocks and the power pins. Screw it all together as I'm showing here, and then this creates a nice little plug. And this can just plug together after you've unfolded the board. You could, and most people do, this kind of wiring underneath the board, but to uh, put up and put away quicker, I decided to put it on top and just hide it under a building. Time to see if all my efforts have been worth it or in vain. Will they make the gap? Will they get all the way around the board? So many questions. So I'm going to call that a success. So there's two running lines I have at the moment, the up and the down. Um, obviously I'm going to have to complete the third loop when I'm able to get some more track from Hornby. But yeah, the system works. They're running very well. I'm quite happy.
thank you for joining me on my little uh, track building adventure here. Obviously the skills and techniques I have shown in this video are purely my own <laughs> and uh, by all means you can adapt techniques to suit your needs or skill levels and by no stretch of the imagination am I claiming to be an expert in any of this stuff, this is literally just how I did it and there's probably a thousand and one better ways of doing it. But anyway, thank you all for watching very, very, very much. If you could all do me a solid, if you could drop a like and subscribe to the channel, that would help me out immensely. Follow me on Facebook, Let's Make Tracks, TT120. There's also the Facebook group, TT120 Showcase and Share. Right, that'll do for this week, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.